opening statements. I don't really know how to start this video, but this is a mandatory long essay video for January. I've always wanted to analyze Spencer because I used to hate him. Because of Hero of the Rails. Duh. But I'm a huge fan of him now. I even have a Spencer fanfiction floating around, which is the highest honor I can bestow upon a fictional character as an aspiring writer. I'll go into the lore behind this original hatred at the end of the analysis. I'll be splitting this analysis into two parts, going episode by episode. So let's get into the lore of Steely Spencer. Series 7, Something Fishy. I'm going to skip this because it's a cameo. It is technically Spencer's debut, Appearance Rise. Series 7, Gordon and Spencer. This is the episode where Spencer does something for once. It starts with Gordon being excited since the Duke of Duchess of Boxford are arriving on Sodor. Gordon wants to be their express train, so he gets ready and bullies Thomas in the process. But on his way to meet the Duke and Duchess, he gets diverted into a siding by a fast engine. Gordon arrives and finds out from James that the engine from earlier is Spencer, the fastest engine now. Gordon is mad but secretly impressed. Spencer has to take the Duke and Duchess to their party. It's beyond Gordon's hill, so Gordon suggests that Spencer take on plenty of water, but Spencer claims to have plenty of water and storms off. Spencer takes the Duke and Duchess to multiple places but fails to take on more water, so he ends up breaking down, which causes Sir Topham Hatt to send Gordon to help Spencer. Gordon gets his lick in while Spencer makes a goofy excuse to prove he isn't a fraud. Allegedly. Keep in mind, allegedly. They manage to arrive on the party on time. Thomas asks James his thoughts on Spencer, and James replies with the phrase, too much puff and not enough steam. Sir Tom Hatt compliments Gordon by calling him the fastest engine on Sodor. Okay, this episode is a perfect introduction to Spencer. I'm going to make a bold claim. Spencer is just a younger version of Gordon, and here's why. He pulls up the Sodor and refuses to take advice from Gordon, who is a commoner engine and gets owned in the process. Now, doesn't this remind you of someone? Anyone? Exactly. It's something that Gordon would do. Gordon in Series 1 is perfectly defined by the phrase, too much puff and not enough steam. He is introduced as the fastest engine and needs an older engine to humble him. Also, that's why Spencer is a perfect foil to Gordon. Spencer is Gordon, but richer. He's the only engine that serves as a legitimate threat to Gordon. That's why they work together so well. But I'll get into that as we go on. Series 8, Edward the Great. This is the episode where Spencer gets owned again, but in a different way. It starts with Edward living his life despite his age. Spencer pulls up to Knapford and is informed by his conductor that he has beat Gordon's speed record. Now this is where Spencer pulls out his ultimate trap card, his age. He knows he is younger and more modern compared to the engines on Sodor and lets everyone know it. The entire steam team is offended, but Sir Topham Hatt pulls up with a game plan for the day. Spencer will take the Duke and Duchess of Boxford to her summer house, and another engine will take their furniture to the summer house too. So the entire steam team is excited because they can race Spencer and win. But Sir Tom Hatt chooses Edward to pull the furniture, and the entire steam team is mad apart from Thomas and Percy, who have faith in Edward. So the race begins. Spencer stops at the first station so the Duke and Duchess can have tea. Edward arrives later to see the porter cheering him on. Spencer later stops again so the Duke can take pictures of the countryside. Spencer also falls asleep. Later, Gordon passes by Spencer and realizes that Spencer is winning. He also calls Edward a waste of steam. But a second later, he sees Edward and praises him for working so hard. Bro switched up real fast. So the Duke finishes taking pictures and Spencer has to be woken up. But it's too late. Edward passes by Spencer and makes it to the summer house. First, winning the race. To conclude, this episode establishes Spencer's elitist side, which helps my case with Gordon, because Gordon is a commoner engine. It also sets up the rivalry, because he just beat Gordon's speed record, and we all know that Gordon won't take that line down. Also, Bro lost to Edward, and we all know Gordon's taken multiple L's against Edward, too. Series 10, Topped Off Thomas. Thomas is racing the wind. Insert dumb train joke here. He has to stop at a junction, where Spencer is lurking. I just realized this is the first Thomas and Spencer interaction. Now Spencer is playing big with the Duke and Duchess, 
and both hats for a tea party at the Scottish Castle. Thomas wants to take them on Annie and Clarabelle. It's like the earlier episode with Gordon in the Express. But Spencer is racist towards small engines. He makes a statement that big engines do big engine jobs, while small engines do small engine jobs. This sort of mirrors the Gordon statement that he's a big blue engine and he can do whatever he wants. Thomas claims to be faster than the wind, but Spencer disagrees, so they decide to race to the next station. Spencer stops at the station, but Thomas bypasses the station and blows her Topham hat's hat away. <laughs> That's a funny line. Spencer made the goofy pog face earlier, but now looks scared. Now Thomas has to find his hat before the tea party. The hat is on Bertie's roof, but Gordon is nearby and moves so fast that it blows away. Now it's on Farmer McCall's scarecrow, but Harold is nearby, so it blows away again. Now it's on one of the windmill sails. But the wind makes it blow away. Thomas makes a rare sad face and is about to give up, but sees the hat. There's a goofy effect, and now the hat is on Thomas's funnel. Slowly, Thomas uses wind breathing to get the hat and thrust her top of hat. M- okay, that was mainly a Thomas episode, but it sets up Thomas's beef with Spencer. Series 11, Emily's Rubbish. First time I review an Emily episode. Emily has to work with a new engine at the shunning yard. It's whiff. Insert nerd emoji joke here. They have to collect rubbish. The three big engines immediately make fun of Emily, with constant bullying. So she abandons Whiff by stopping at a siding and meeting Elizabeth. What is that? But Whiff catches up. Emily attempts to be Gordon on the express line, while Whiff takes the main line. It turns into Fleet of Facility, but funnier. She meets Spencer, who has to take the Duke and Duchess to lunch, but the smelly cars are blocking the way. Emily needs backup, but Gordon declines. Even James is offended. She finds Whiff while Spencer is offended. Spencer is impressed and calls Whiff a very, very useful engine. So this episode represents a turning point in Spencer's psyche, the good. He compliments Whiff, despite Whiff being commoner and a small engine. This represents that Spencer can be a grateful guy when faced with stuff like this. Series 11, Dream On. Thomas is shunting one day and is informed that he must help Spencer by Sir Topham Hat. Spencer treats Thomas like a personal servant having him move his coaches and all that. Later, Spencer is chilling in Titmus sheds and bullies his steam team again. The next day, Thomas needs to collect cars and goes fast. Bro forgot the plot of Topped Off Thomas. Emily calls out to him and appeasing the Tomily people in the process. Now, Thomas wants to look fly. So this is coming from the fact that Spencer claims a bunch of things and Thomas wants to be like that, so he's going to go on a bunch of dumb missions. Toby pulls up and tells Thomas that he has to shine at the quarry. Mavis starts to check Thomas out at the quarry, but the stone removes his shine. This is his toughest challenge, going up Gordon's hill. But why would Sir Tom Hat do this to Thomas, bruv? On the third day, Thomas accepts himself. Until the plotline of the Great Race, which actually does make sense if you read the wikis, but I would have to go on about that for like an hour if we got into the weeds of that, so I won't. Sir Tom Hat needs the passenger cars for Spencer, since the Duke has to return to the mainland on short notice. He comes to Spencer, but his boiler's still cold. Now Spencer feels silly. Now it's Thomas's time to shine. Bro even gets a get up and arrives at the airport and meets Jeremy, the airplane. I did not know the airplanes had sentience. This episode is interesting because we see the impact of Spencer on the community. Thomas is feeling inadequate but still pushes through. It also shows that Spencer isn't completely perfect despite being a newer model. You will see a bunch of Steamworks episodes in the future. Just it's quick spoiler there. Series 13, Creaky Cranky. There is going to be a party at the Duke and Duchess's summer house for children of Sodor, since it's spring break. Thomas, James, and Henry pull up at the docks with their plans for a party. They all have to take various things to the summer house. Cranky hates parties and is pissed off at Thomas since he called him Creaky Cranky. So now Thomas is going to challenge Cranky by having him lift various things. He takes James' load to Cranky and then he lifts it. He does the same thing to Henry's load. So Thomas releases his trap card and has Cranky lift him, breaking Cranky in the process. But Sir Tom Hat catches their stupidity in 4K Ultra HD. They both get called out and Spencer arrives to bully them even more. So Thomas has a truce with Spencer so he can bring both James and Henry's loads on time. 
Thomas apologizes to Cranky and then goes to the Steamworks to get Cranky's parts from Victor. Victor doesn't even question it. Bro already knows Thomas is up to no good. Kevin even says to give Cranky his best, which is cute. So he arrives at the docks with Cranky's parts. So Cranky and Thomas hug it out. In conclusion, we see a shift. Sure, the steam team have beef with Spencer, but they are willing to work together to be really useful. Also, this is a really good Cranky episode, since it's CGI, and they can have him lift a ton of stuff for fun, unlike the model series, where he's mainly a prop. Series 13, Tickled Pink. James pulls up to the Steamworks to get a new red coat of paint. But first, the workers remove all of James's paint and add his undercoat, which is pink. But Sir Tom Hat joins the server. It's his granddaughter's birthday today. Emily was supposed to take her to her party, but she broke down. So James is forced to move, even though his paint job isn't done. When he first arrives, Emily knows James and laughs at him. So James vows to hide from everyone and starts with Toby. But Gordon goes too fast and exposes him, so Toby emotes on him. He tries to hide from Diesel next time by using his freight cars against him, but it's exposed. So he gets emoted on again. He takes a shortcut through a tunnel, but Gordon, Percy, and Thomas are on the other side. Gordon needs to get through with Express, and James is forced to come out exposed. They all emote on him, and Gordon even says a funny line. But James is brave and revokes his vow. Spencer is at a junction and emotes on him. Henry catches him in 4K. He pulls up to the children and is afraid he'll get owned. But turns out, Sir Tom Hatt's granddaughter and her friends all like pink and it's their favorite color. In conclusion, Spencer was here to emote on James, which is more accurate and just for him. Series 13, Steamy Sodor. Sir Tom Hatt puts Thomas in charge of the steamworks for the day, since Victor will be busy helping the lower gauge engines. Victor teaches Thomas how to be a doctor, but Thomas skips the tutorial. So basically, this episode is probably better read about on the wiki than watching. It's just Thomas being a dumbass. Spencer pulls up since he needs a new paint job, but Thomas doesn't listen. Henry pulls up since his firebox is dirty, but Thomas doesn't listen. Lastly, James arrives with a blocked funnel, and it gets so bad this time that Kevin goofs up. I don't want to elaborate any further because it's a cringe-worthy episode, but then Victor arrives back earlier and thinks Kevin started. Thomas admits he's stupid, and together, Victor and Thomas fix everything, so in the end, they hug it out with Kevin. The writers love using Spencer as a crux in Steamworks lore, as you will see later on. In conclusion, Thomas sucks. Series 13, Snow Tracks. This episode stays lore accurate with Thomas's hatred of the snow. Even Henry is scared, but Gordon tells the group chat to shut up, claiming that he's that guy. Gordon claims superiority over hills, even though he has a hill named after him, since he got stuck on it without any snow. And there's snow this time. So Gordon goes up the hill and loses control where Spencer is because he's coming up from the other side, so he covers Spencer in the snow. This episode, Loki opens up a dialogue to the later episode, Spencer the Grand. Both Gordon and Spencer think they're that guy, but are humbled by the weather. Anyways, now Gordon can't even see because of the snow. Bro crashed into a siding of slate trucks. Gordon tries to push a gigantic snowball off the hill, with Thomas following, but Gordon loses control again and slides back. This episode is better watched in red this time. They split up, but the gigantic snowball hits Thomas, making him stuck in the snow. So Gorn brings Rocky to get Thomas out after realizing that he can't do it himself. They hug it out by working together. Even Gorn concedes, like how Spencer will and Spencer the Grand. Series 14. Oh, the indignity. Spencer is Grand, but Gorn is also called Grand. This models previous episodes. Spencer is also proud, oh my gosh, of Victor and Kevin appearance, together! Yeah, this is like my first time watching it, because I skipped series 14, and I realized last second, which is pretty embarrassing. Gordon is here, because the wheels on his express cars are wobbling, but he needs to be at random at tea time to pick up the island specter. Bro has to do that again. Bro has to deal with Whiff and Scrunch, who are already there to be fixed up. Gordon is also described as snooty, like Spencer will be in a later episode. I might have to pull off the fangirl stuff. Sir Tom Hatt needs Gordon to clean up the rubbish for Whiff. Everyone likes that except Gordon. Gordon says oh to indignity for the first time. Spencer is involved with Whiff stuff again. Spencer starts hauling insults after smelling the stench. Spencer this time brought the Duke and Duchess's waste. It's clean so day, and Gordon is offended by Spencer's comments. 
Now James is arriving and calls Gordon stinky. This is a certified roast and karma moment for Gordon. There are rhymes everywhere, and now Diesel is involved in this conspiracy and roasts Gordon even more. Now Sir Tom Hat arrives with Thomas mad. Gordon calls Whiff a very grand and important engine. Whiff and Scrunch finally arrive. They were fixed up already at the steamworks. So Gordon owns up to his mistake and switches jobs with Whiff. Whiff arrives with the island Spencer and compliments Gordon. Gordon calling Whiff a very grand and important engine is actually a throwback to Spencer, like, calling people out, too. Like, that's pretty interesting. Okay, we can connect this episode to Emily's rubbish and prove the Gordon-Spencer analysis, as I said earlier. James offends Gordon, and now he knows what it feels like to be Emily. Also, they use similar words to describe Gordon like grand and snooty. Spencer also offends Gordon. Lastly, Gordon is shown to compliment others like Spencer does when provoked. Like, as I said earlier, it's all connected. Series 15, Edward the Hero. I'm going to skip this because it's just a cameo. Series 15, Spencer the Grand. It was a foggy day on the island of Sodor. The steam team is in their sheds, and Sir Tom Hatt tells everyone to stay inside. Spencer is there, visiting on Duke and Duchess' business, and is permitted by the Fat Controller to stay in Percy's shed until Percy finishes his mail run. Rip Percy. Everyone else got a day off except him. Spencer is a rich kid who believes he can chuff to the summer house without getting lost. He first spots a building and believes it's a summer house, but he's actually at the quarry with Mavis. Spencer cringes, realizes his mistake, and leaves. Now, he later sees a platform and believes it's a summer house again, but it's this time it's Whiff at his waist dump. Spencer goofs up again and leaves in embarrassment. Now he sees tall windows and believes it's a summer house, but turns out he went to a circle and is in Tidmouth's sheds again. Thomas jump scares him, and Spencer realizes he's a fraud. The entire steam team feels sorry for Spencer, respectfully though. Bro could have stayed at Tidmouth's sheds the entire time and waited it out. Bro even had permission from Sir Tom Hat had to use Percy's shed. I'd be laughing at him if I were them, but that's just me. Even Spencer refuses Thomas' kindness and notices Percy's absence. Spencer goes off to find Percy. But he didn't think he would get this far, but then he hears Percy's whistle. So Spencer takes Percy home, using Thomas' whistle as a guide. The steam team is happy. Uh, uh, I'm in shock. Spencer started as a fraud, but redeemed himself. And it was cool. They took the humility shown by Gordon and Spencer in previous episodes and took it even further. I am pleasantly surprised. Series 15. Kevin the Steamy. Me when Kevin lore. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> happy, 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 happy. Anyways, Victor is very busy today, while Thomas and Percy have just been cleaned. Victor has to pick up a new boiler for Spencer, leaving his son in charge of the steamworks. I noticed there's a change. Now he's trusting Kevin instead of Thomas. That's some actual good character development for Victor. Not gonna lie. Percy and Thomas invent a new shunting game from the oil can in front of them, like the dumbasses they are. Like, it literally starts from Thomas randomly bumping into it. Now they call it Bish Bash Bosh for some reason. Kevin joins, but he goes too far, and the flatbeds fall over. Kevin feels bad, but Thomas and Percy promise to help him later with the game after work. Kevin decides to practice while they are gone, but Emily arrives because her buffers need buffering. Kevin decides to help, but is stopped by an oily can blocking his way, so he tries to practice shunning it, but ends up scratching Emily's wheels. But then Spencer joins the server. He requires a new boiler, so he tries shunning again with another oil can blocking the way. This also messes up Spencer, too. Kevin is glad to have mastered oil breathing, but Victor rejoins the server. The, spoil the oil splashes onto Victor, so everyone is disappointed in Kevin again. Like last time. But I feel bad for Victor. Bro tries to leave the server and everyone else ends up turning into a hellscape. Thomas and Percy arrive back at the steamworks again, eager to challenge Kevin to a shunting match. But Kevin declines and fixes all his mistakes. He gets to Victor but needs to get the wash can for him. That's when Thomas and Percy realize Kevin is good at hide and seek. So they play hide and seek this time. Okay, not really a Spencer episode, but I got to see the Steamworks best father and son duo, so it wins a win this time, bruv. Series 16, Thomas and the Rubbish Train. I'm going to skip this because it's just a mention. Series 16, Sodor Surprise Day. I'm going to skip this because it's just a cameo. Series 16, Whiff's Wish. Whiff is collecting garbage and arrives at Brendam Docks, where Spencer is currently located. 
Spencer has brought the mayor, who is meeting up with a friend. Whiff is interested in Spencer being called Grand by the mayor. Sir Tom Hat arrives and informs Whiff he needs to clear the line of garbage for the mayor's arrival. But Spencer claims that Whiff can never be Grand. Later, he sees Emily and forms a plan. He offers to take some of Emily's coal cars for her instead of the trash and does this again with some of Edward's wood. Later, Bro bumps into Percy. He realizes he needs to clear out the trash so Percy isn't late delivering the mail. He brings the trash along with the wood and coal. Bro drops off the wood for Farmer Cull so he can use his fence to keep his cattle inside. Then, he brings the coal for all the engines to use. Bro gets away with this without Sir Topham Hat noticing. He gets all the trash out of the way, so Spencer said a grand engine should. He arrives at the station and sees Spencer again. Spencer is being an asshole again, but Whiff brushes it off. The mayor and Sir Tom Hat arrive with Gordon. They compliment Whiff, and the mayor calls Whiff a grand engine. This episode also shows Spencer's superiority complex and how it affects smaller engines again, like with Thomas. It also shows that smaller engines can counter big engines like Spencer. Also, I just realized something while recording this episode. This episode is a bit of a contradiction to when Spencer called Whiff a very, very useful engine in Emily's rubbish. Or was he talking about Emily? I have no idea, and I don't want to go back and rewatch. I'm just going to ignore that and just blame the various Ryan teams of Thomas and Friends over the years. Maybe Spencer regretted saying that after the fact. Who knows? Alright, Series 16, Welcome Stafford. This is going to be long. I am very sorry. First off, respectfully, we see Stafford for the first time. And my first reaction to seeing him was, what the heck is that? After some research, which means I just pulled up Stafford's page on the Thomas and Friends wiki and checked his basis, turns out Stafford is based on a real-life battery-powered engine, which also has the name Stafford on it. I didn't know that. Turns out Stafford can only run at 6 hours on a charge, which will play into effect later. I shouldn't be surprised by these goofy odd designs. Compared to the Great Race designs, Stafford's is pretty tame. Moving on. Spencer is described as snooty and grand, supporting my take with Gordon from earlier. He pulls up to the station and tells Thomas about his mission with Stafford. Thomas decides to also join the mission, and they head to the Steamworks. Spencer pulls up and tries to be cool, but Victor tells him to shut his trap. Spencer tries to be that guy, even though he isn't even a Sodor native. To be fair, you can make that argument with all the engines, but you get my point. Victor tries to tell Spencer sir, something, but he doesn't listen. Even Stafford has something to say. If it was a model series, the driver would probably do this, but I digress. But Spencer wants to take Stafford to Sodor's search and rescue center to show him off like a pet. Spencer continues to show off to the children, despite Stafford's warnings. So, turns out, Stafford's battery is running out. This leads me to believe that Spencer arrived too early at the Steamworks and should have waited out the wanted level. So Spencer abandons his ass and pulls up at Sodor's search and rescue center and tells everyone about Stafford. But they look at him like, Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Spencer realizes Stafford must be lost and searches for him by backtracking. He finds Stafford being charged at a station. I didn't know that Sodor had a battery charging stuff at their stations now. Even though they have only one engine so far that needs it, it seems. Or is it portable? I'm too lazy to research. But if they are built in, Sir Top Hat took a lot of time and money accommodating this one engine. Anyways, Spencer asked Stafford what happened earlier just to cut him off again. Now he wants to take Stafford to Misty Island. This is the midpoint of the episode, and I'm just confused. Spencer seems to be operating on the dum dum juice. Bro is making zero sense. Even Gordon would be better in the situation at his worst. But Stafford still follows through, even though his conductor was charging him earlier. If this was the Mall series, Stafford's conductor would tell Spanner, Sir, to shut up and wait. But we can't have that for the sake of more conflict. Stafford is still warning him. He still stops again while everyone is at the park noticing them. Spencer arrives at the Locos, and they don't just stare at Spencer when he mentions Stafford. They laugh at him. Shout out to them Locos, bro. They the real Gs. So the same scene happens again, but this time, Spencer wants to go to Duke and Duchess's summer house. I just find it funny that Spencer is allowed to go on goofy side quests, but not assigned to Duke and Duchess. They even let him race a few times. It also shows a character shift, because we all know Spencer originally wouldn't want to associate with lesser engines. 
Bro is so excited now to his detriment. At this point, I was thinking of taking a break and picking this up later. I mean, look how long this episode has taken me to analyze. But I can't stop now. I'm too invested into this. So the same stuff happens again. What hurts Spencer, especially this time, since the Duke and Duchess saw his stupidity. So he takes the Duke and Duchess to Stafford. They like Stafford and the Duke calls him a splendid little engine. James will not take that lying down. Now the Duke and Duchess have to meet Sir Tom Hatt at Napford. But Spencer can't move because he's out of coal. Bro did too much today, but Stafford pulls out his trap card. His battery's fully charged, so he can move freely now. But Spencer says, oh, the shame, which is definitely not a ripoff of Gordon's oh, the indignity. It is, lol. Everyone knows. So Stafford shunts Spencer, which makes sense because he's a new shunting engine. Everyone knows Stafford, but not Spencer. Bro got humbled badly. Everyone in the group chat separ- celebrates the arrival of Stafford to Sodor. Sir Tom Hatt even says the name of the episode. I wonder if they expect only Spencer to arrive or both of them together. Dumb question, Momento. They expected them both. In conclusion, really solid Spencer episode. It should be obvious by how long I'm talking about it. I don't know if this clears Spencer to Grand, though. I'd have to t- think about it some more. Conclusion. So, what have we learned so far? Well, I learned some things that I will share with whoever's still listening. So listen up. What surprised me was Spencer has some stories connecting to Whiff. It's pretty random, but makes sense. Pair a rich kid with a smelly kid. It's funny that way. The writers probably thought this was so funny. They were kicking their feet and laughing their seats with that one. I also learned that Spencer has stories connecting to the Steamworks. I didn't think this would happen since he's a regal engine. Out of all the characters in Thomas and Friends, Bro keeps appearing. I feel bad for Victor and Kevin. Next up, Bro be on the wildest side quest when he's not working for the Duke or Duchess, or both, yeah. They just let him out of the basement to commit random acts of violence. But seriously, you know what scares me? How similar Gore and Spencer are. Like, I know the Thomas and Friends wiki says they're cousins, and that actually fits if you look at the builds and the lore. But Gorn doesn't even recognize Spencer when they first meet in Series 7. Even the writers know this by using words like Grand and Sumi for them both. It low-key brings up the debate of nature versus nurture. I will briefly explain the term as a current AP Psychology student. Nature is based on genetics, and nurture is based on your environment, like your living condition. We know that express engines tend to have a big ego, nature, so being used by a duke and duchess a lot and being treated like a king, nurture, probably contributed to Spencer's ego. You can say the same thing about Gordon with Sodor's express, nurture. Lastly, Odin, dignity versus oh the shame caught me off guard. Like I know Spencer was in the episode when Gordon first coined the phrase, but I don't think he heard it. That's the wildest part of it all to me. Afterward, my thoughts on Spencer are so far pretty goofy. Bro is either going to do nothing, get owned, or have a really deep story. Which represents Thomas and Friends in a nutshell. It also shows that the writers like Spencer and didn't want to retire him. My favorite episodes are Gordon and Spencer, Spencer the Grand, and Welcome Stafford. But we're not done yet. I still need to cover the rest of Spencer's TV appearances and even the movies before I pass judgment. I didn't forget about that. I'll see you guys next time. Drop down your favorite Spencer episode in the comments. Have a wonderful day. See ya. Opening Statements we are back. I just need to finish up a few more episodes plus some movies and we'll finally be free from this hellscape. So let's get started. Series 17, The Afternoon Tea Express. My boy Steven is trying to do his job, but Spencer's being an asshole. Now bro needs to collect stuff for the afternoon tea. Spencer's just continuing his asshole behavior. Steven heads back after collecting his stuff. He makes an express joke, but Gordon isn't having it. Gordon starts pushing Steven. He pushes Steven up to the junction. Man, what is it with these two? I'm telling you, same person for real. Spencer was shocked to see Steven so early, so Steven strolls Spencer. He lets the other engines push him. Now, shout for Steven for realizing he can use that to his advantage. Other engines will have gone mad. Now, Steven needs to get jammed, but there's no one on the server. But then Spencer joins the server to bully Steven. Steven asks Spencer to push him, but Spencer refuses. But Steven got the old man power, so pushes Spencer's buttons. He says Spencer is slow, but Spencer pushes Steven too fast, which messes up the jam. So Steven makes a new plan, which doesn't involve being pushed. This is another goofy Spencer episode. Bro fell from a single trap, and we got to see Spencer bullying older engines again. I'm telling you, after Spencer the Grand, this man just went down a, a path of goofiness. A lawless goofiness path, bro. Series 18, signal cr- signals crossed. Just going to skip this, because it's a cameo. 
Sirius 18, Spencer's VIP. Sir Tom Hat informs the group chat to not be stupid today, because he's going to get a award today or something. Goran volunteers to pick up the VIP, but Spencer is doing it. Shout out to Series 7. Spencer is going too fast again, so Bro almost crashed into Edward. Shout out to Series 8. Spencer arrives too early at the signal, so Spencer is no longer on the main line. Even Bill and Ben laugh at him. So Spencer arrives with Sir Tom Hat, and the VIP is pissed. So Goran and Thomas want to be the ones who take the VIP to the main line along with James. So the whole, whole group chat smells blood and beats the crap out of Spencer for a millionth time. Spencer got lucky, sort of. Everyone else is now showing off, but worse. James, Gordon, Duck, and Oliver to name a few. So Sir Tom had bullies the group, entire group chat, but Spencer actually saved the group chat by asking for another chance, and the VIP agrees. And they actually succeed the next day. So Sir Tom Hack can get his trophy and all that. But this episode kind of shocked me. Spencer, who isn't even from Sodor, saves Sodor. Just think about that for a second. Moving on. Series 19. Who's Jeffrey? So this episode poses a question. But I'd like to go even di- deeper. Why is Jeffrey? Thomas is late with his goods chain to random docks. So Thomas bumps into some, to some troublesome trucks who can talk. Salty is confused and Cranky is pissed. So I checked the wiki, and this is another dumbass Thomas episode that Spencer is forced to be in. Thomas made up Jeffrey and everything else I'm going to tell you in the episode. Everything else I say is basically a lie up to, like, the last part. Later, Thomas picks up Annie and Clarabelle from the Steamworks. Victor asks her about Jeffrey and asks for his paint color if he arrives for a new fresh coat of paint. It's red. Gordon, James, and Percy start a debate in the group chat about Jeffrey's speed. Percy says he must be pretty fast because he disappeared, like, really quickly. Sir Tom Hatt wants to see him, but Thomas claims Jeffrey's at Henry's tunnel hiding and runs away. So Sir Tom Hatt takes Percy, and Thomas hides in the tunnel and pretends to be Jeffrey when talking to Sir Tom Hatt. But Spencer arrived forcing Thomas out. Thomas is forced to confess and Spencer snitched. Also, Sir Tom Hatt's worried about Jeffrey, but he doesn't exist. So he's reprimanded by Sir Tom Hatt, and Percy is sad because he actually wanted him to exist. Thomas owns up to hitting some more bouncy balls, angering Spencer. In conclusion, Jeffrey definitely has a fan base on Tumblr. Series 19, The Beast of Sodor. It's snowing, so Spencer has to sleep in James' shed since Bickerhart's own bridge is blocked. Also, James isn't here for some reason. Spencer is attacked by an icicle, which causes Gorn to bully him. Spencer claims to have fought the abominable snowman, scaring Henry in the process. The next day, Sir Topham had got the Duke's permission to pair Henry and Spencer on this quest. Conspiracy theory. Spencer says it's because he's a private engine when reality bros scared. I didn't know Spencer had such a deep range. Like, this man is going all guttural and bullying Henry. Sir Tom Hatt takes a detour and tries to get help after crashing his car. He needs his mother for lunch. Spencer continues to troll Henry. He claims to see the abominable snowman, but really, it's, but it's really Emily. Now Sir Tom has covered in snow and screams. Henry has another panic attack, but it's Thomas. He has Dowager Hat, who is mad that Sir Tom Hatt is late. So Spencer continues to troll, but it isn't funny this time. Henry continues to freak out, but it's James, Rocky, and Edward. They keep going to find Sir Tom Hat covered in snow, so naturally they assume the worst. Now, but Spencer completely covered himself in smoke and fear. Wimp. So he realized the truth, and Thomas arrives with Dowager Hat. Thomas compliments Henry for not being a dumbass. Also, my conspiracy was like, lol. So, back in the shed, Spencer claims to be that guy, but the whole group chat knows. This is a wild episode. We obtained a new pairing of Henry and Spencer and got more of Spencer's goofiness. Spencer grants to my fit for now, but honestly, looking back, this might also be pretty good as well. Also, welcome Stafford, too. Like, I might have to make, like, a top five or something. Who knows? Series 19. Two wills good. Spencer is like, taking the Duke and Duchess to a birthday ball at a castle. Spencer claims he won't let the Duke down. Stop the cap. Bertie and Thomas are at Knapford, where Thin Controller arrives with a meeting with the Fat Controller on a bike. This starts a huge debate over wheels in the group chat. These trains are like children. Spencer wants to debate some more, but he has to leave. But Spencer's valve gear snaps. Now, now that's just unfair. Bro is doing so well. Thomas arrives to bully Spencer. The Duke and Duchess take Thomas and Annie and Clarabelle. But then now there's a tree on the tracks. Then Bertie joins the group chat. The Duke is suffering while the Duchess is in dreamland. Then there's some sharp stuff on the road giving Bertie a flat t- tire. Then the thin controller joins the group chat and goes to the telephone to call in Harold. So they cut through all obstacles and arrive on time. Later and after, the whole group chat is mad. The fat controller attempts to ride a bicycle. In conclusion, Spencer got done dirty. Series 20, Cautious Connor. Just gonna skip this because it's just a cameo. Series 21, Confused Coaches. We finally come to the last full Spencer episode, and the perfect ending to the Spencer lore, in my opinion, respectfully. Gordon and Spencer beef for the millionth time. For some reason, Spencer is taking the Duke and Duchess to their summer house in the middle of winter. They race again. 
Spencer uses his trap cards and Scorn has to stop the Express despite having a lead. At nap for the next day, the Duke and Sir Tom had a time about party plans at the castle for a new year. Gordon invokes platform numbers in protest. Spencer invokes engine numbers. I could try and say who's the better one by like by like numbers standpoint, which is really dumb. Gordon tells Spencer he's numberless. I really like the soundtrack for this episode. Usually there isn't music, but this actually slaps. Also, everyone seems to have fun playing their roles. The takes are amazing. When they raise again later and Gordon says a goofy line is a great example of this. Anyway, Spencer is sad. Sir Tom had acts a fool while entertaining Duke and Duchess, and Spencer co- forms a goofy plan. Like, the editing there was, like, really solid. So Spencer has checkmated Gordon by taking his platform. For now, we get to see toy trains in the Thomas verse. So immediately I see a problem. So since it got switched around, Gordon's not long- longer carrying the Express. And now Spencer is not Gordon's taking the light, like, like group of people. Sp- so, like, Spencer isn't used to heavy loads, while Gordon isn't used to light loads. So Gordon would win the race and have a 3-1 lead. And yeah, since they took the wrong platforms and it was noticed too late, there's been a mix-up. Spencer, I mean, this episode's easily dethroned Spencer to Grand, so they raise a gamble that mix-up isn't good. Now all the humans are pissed. Now they're beefing like five-year-olds. Sir Tom Hatt tells, tells them to hug it out so they can fix all their mistakes. Later comes to midnight and later the new year, so they finally have Gordon and Spencer apologize. This is the perfect ending to the Spencer lore, and here is why. One, it comes full circle. Spencer's first full episode was with Gordon and NC Gordon and Spencer yet again. Also, Gordon was the last entrance Spencer needed to hug it out with to complete his character arc. I'm actually glad he didn't speak again after this. This is a perfect way to retire a character with grace. We also finally express Gor- like address Gordon's and Spencer's beef after years. Like They have moments where they beef, but not an entire episode in a long time. Also, both of them finally get exposed to their beef in front of their respective owners, which never happened before. This is a perfect way to end Spencer elitism more, but by having realized he's just like Gordon. Also, this is like a perfect ending for Gordon on his end, uh, because he actually hugs it out with someone for once. Okay, this brings us to the movies, so we can reach ultimate conclusion. But first, a few bits of housekeeping, but let's get to it. Series 22, an engine of many colors. Fantasy. Just gonna skip it because it's a fantasy. Series 24, Thomas and the Royal Engine. Just going to skip it because it's a mention. Mentioned. Series 24, Nia's Bright Idea. Mentioned. I'm just going to skip this because it's just a mention. Movies. 2009, Here of the Rails. Part 1, The Hell Escape. Would you believe me if I said that I chose to review Spencer as an excuse to rewatch this movie for the billionth time? Okay, that was partially true. I'm sorry. So at this point, Spencer was still his full asshole arc. Bro ri- so Bro arrives on Sword to help build the Duke and Duchess' summer house, which I feel like they've done this a billion times, but I'm not going to talk about it any further. He proceeds to bully everyone on the island as per usual. It gets so bad that at Brendam docks, Spencer calls Thomas a toy. Also, he says Thomas can't pull like cargo to save his life, but he said this in front of the whole group chat, which offends everyone. So a challenge is issued, and that's how Thomas finds Hero. So Thomas goes to his teamworks, then Spencer arrives to bully him. But Thomas kills him with kindness. Spencer even gets roasted with Victor. With his, no one can speak him like that BS. So now Spencer plays the role of the beast and flew the facility and searches for him. He's trying to catch Thomas in the act of doing dumb stuff. Thomas starts his quest of trying to repair Hero. So Thomas tells Bruce about his plans that are confronted by Spencer for being sus. Yeah, Spencer's onto them now. Also, the Steam team know that what is Thomas is up to. Kinda. Spencer catches Thomas and Percy in the act of being sus. He even confronts Emily for doing Thomas' job, but she tells him to stop. Bro was so offended, he didn't even realize Thomas and Percy were above him. So Thomas and Percy hang out with Hero, who informs him they should lay low because of Spencer. So T- Percy and Thomas at the quarry. I forgot to mention they've been on a search quest since Percy lost his mail cars when Thomas originally showed them to Hero. But Spencer's there, so Mavis distracts him by showing around the quarry. Part 2. The End. So Mavis corners him, Thomas Mercy laughs at him, and James takes some more parts of the hero. Then Spencer gets attacked by Slate. Spencer has the steam works and gets bullied by loud noises by Kevin, allowing Thomas, Percy, and Victor to troll him and gets Hero's parts. Spencer gets close to Hero while James and Toby are chilling with him. Spencer finds Percy's mail cards and gets chased by James and Toby. Thomas corners him and Sir Tom Hat reprimands Spencer. Spencer tries to snitch, but no one believes him. Then Thomas and Hero chill, but Spencer's back for round two. The chase happens, and Spencer bullies Thomas, and then Thomas makes a new plan to do his actual job while the steam team watches Hero. Also, Spencer gets reprimanded by Duke and Duchess. So after that, we have a final chasing where Spencer collapses into the mud. 
Thomas finally confesses, so Hero can be fixed, and they all work together in the summer house. Also, Spencer says, I'm sorry. Bro thought it was that easy. In conclusion, Spencer's the biggest L in the show. 2010. Missy Island Rescue. No words. Just going to skip this since it's a cameo. 2011. Dave the Diesels. Mention. Just going to skip this since it's a mention. 2013. King of the Railway. I'm going to take a different approach for this part of the video. This was the first time I ever watched King of the Railway. For previous episodes, I explained everything, which was short and easy. Here I'll be jumping around a bit, unlike the Hero Rails part, since Spencer isn't a war criminal this time. My personal thoughts on this movie are... Came for this for Spencer, and stayed for a new strike team, Hero and Steven. Anyways, Connor and Caitlin suck. Should've just kept this a Steven show, but that's just me. Like, but seriously though, they appear so randomly just to sell some toys and race Spencer and Gordon ending credits. And also, I may sound old, but their designs are too bright. Just look at it. It is not fun. It just looks like a dumb toy. At least the original trains look realistic in some form. Anyways, back to the Spencer review. First appearance. Bro jump scared me in the opening credits. Why'd you have to do that? Second appearance. 338. Spencer's hanging the soda door. Third appearance. 414. Spencer's head to the washdown where the steam team is. Gordon is mad because it involves Spencer. Turns out Sir Topham Hat's old friend, Earl of Sodor, is coming back on coming back on Spencer. The Earl is pretty dope. Bro is just so chill with everyone. I think it's because he's explored the world at this point. Bro is just used to everything at this point. He does not care. So yeah, everyone's waiting for Spencer and Natford for a huge party. They're even playing the Thomas theme. Fourth appearance, 605. The Earl, Sir Robert, is interested in partying. Sir so Thomas like, bruv, while the group chat is disappointed. Fifth appearance, 905. At the biggest town rolling bridge, Spencer's coming back and goes to fast where Hero is. Bro forgot the Hero of the Rails plot. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Sixth appearance, 925, 1042, 1102. Now Spencer's spending the nine to Miss Sheds. He's going to be the private engine to the Earl of Sodor. Gordon invokes express trains and hauling heavy goods in order to counter Spencer. Gordon usually hates good work, but he's willing to use it one up Spencer. <laughs> Spencer implies that Gordon is slow because he isn't streamlined like him. They really have to foreshadow the great race with this one. Like, seriously, though. I think this is what put in Gordon's mind the idea for, for the great race. Like, there is no way they said that on purpose and made Gordon streamline like three years later. There, this has to be a coincidence. Well, it can't just be a coincidence. This has to be something. Percy says they should race like men and the next for the next day. Spencer and Gordon agree. The next day, Gordon wonders where Spencer is while Percy is shining their coaches. Percy implies Spencer's a wimp, but Spencer arrives and starts early. So they race to Gordon is having difficulty pulling four heavy coaches. They manage to also foreshadow confused coaches. Like, what is this? The movie that foreshadows everything? Like, they even foreshadow the Steven episode later. Like, bro, this is wild. Gordon's catching up with Spencer leaves the mainline to the Earl's estate. Spencer bullies Gordon by being really useful. This movie also- Yeah, this is what I said. The movie also foreshadows the Afternoon Tea Express episode. Like, bro, this this is a crazy-ass movie. Seventh appearance. 11.58, 12.30. Now Percy's at random docks and jump scares Spencer thinking he's Thomas. Percy roasts him while shunting. Turns out the Earl is talking to the dock manager. Percy roasts him with goods. Now Thomas at the quarry with Spencer. Thomas invokes stone. Turns out the Earl wants Spencer both stones. Spencer invokes the word splendid so Thomas bullies him. Eighth appearance, 3139. Later, Spencer and Gordon race again. This time the fight is even, but Spencer withdraws and warns Gordon and Steven on the tracks. Since Steven's in the waist, Spencer calls Gordon a slow coach. Ninth appearance, like the 40 minute mark, who cares? So basically, Gordon and Spencer try and race again for like a third time, but then Gordon and Caitlin arrive at a new stop, embarrassing them. Because they're like here to help with like the movie and the plot, it doesn't even matter, it's so random. So they also want to race Gore and Spencer, but they both back down since they realize a mismatch. They really try to hit him with the we don't race excuse. End appearance, end of the movie. The Earl's plan is revealed, and for the ending credits, Gore and Spencer, Connor and Caitlin finally get to race it out. They really broke that excuse in like less than like 15-ish minutes. Like, bruh, that was goofy. Conclusion. I'm going to make a strong argument for this movie. Hero Rails represents Spencer's basis, an asshole who only cares about new world models. But I argue this movie, knowing what we know now, heavily represents the final five years of Spencer's character arc. Let me explain. Let me elaborate. 
This movie shows that Spencer, despite being a private engine, is pretty goofy. He's willing to challenge Gordon, has silly banter with Percy and Thomas. In order to rail, Spencer will even engage and will just have left the server. This sets up Spencer for goofy stuff like the Beast of Sodor episode with Henry. It also established that his rivalry with Gordon is heating up, setting up confused coaches. They race like three times and we don't even know the proper ending. And also you can make the argument that this sets up the great race with streamlining being mentioned and Spencer and Gordon's penchant for racing. Which brings us to... 2016, The Great Race. Well, what do you know? The next movie Spencer appears in is The Great Race. I low-key feel bad for Spencer, though. Bro was on his own soil and lost a round new engine for the sake of marketing. He even had to witness streamlining, which turns out to be a big mistake because of a certain big blue engine's ego. Moving on. 2017, Journey Beyond Sodor, named. Just going to skip this because it's just like a cameo. Conclusion. Basically, like, hate to acceptance and, like, the final verdict. So this is the part of the video where through a show filled with talking trains, I explain like a life lesson you can take away from this. This two-part analysis has been pretty eye-opening to say the least. Like this video is pretty long already. Like I'm really gonna have an hour of my record talking about this man. There ain't no way. Because I originally knew Spencer from his villain arc and Hero the Rails. I had no idea he could be such a goofball at times. And I adore his beef with Gordon. Now it's time for the life lesson. Skip the segment now if you don't care. I'm giving you five seconds to decide your fate. Stay or leave. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, it's time for a story. In seventh and now eleventh grade, I've had to read or listen to this TED talk in my English and AP seminar classes. It's called The Danger of Signal Story. Signal? Single story, what the heck? Basically, the talk is about how our limited exposure to certain types of literature can have fully affect a person's understanding of things. I'll put the author's name on the screen so I don't butcher her name. The talk's held interesting and it's filled with deep personal stories. She talks about how growing up in Nigeria, she only read British and, Eng and American children's books, so as an early writer, she only wrote stories based on what happened to British and American children's books. I heavily relate to this. I'm a bit of a fossil, okay? I may be 16, but I did grow up in the era where we did actively use CDs and DVDs to enjoy ourselves. I only had Thomas and the Magic Railroad, The War Crime, and Hero Rails as my source of train entertainment. So I only really fantasized about being a hero fan or neglected Spencer in the process. But now, because of the greatness of YouTube, I found the truth. I still love Spencer as a villain, but now I recognize he's more than that. Bro's an arrogant rich kid at times, but also a goofy scary cat. Or just straight up goofy when he's stuck with Gordon. He's also a bit of a nice guy when he helped Percy get out of the fog. And that's why I'm a huge fan. He's entertaining. And that's actually the point of this whole channel. To move beyond the signal story. Or the signal story, if you know what I mean. And see the whole picture, so in the end, I can come to a respectable opinion. This is the lesson of the video. Well, actually, all my videos. To find the entire story when it comes to things. Moving on. Afterward. So who do you think I'm doing next? I'm currently assigned between a war criminal diesel who attempts to murder a human, or an arrow gauge engine who believes in plain speaking. I need some quick analysis videos of therapy after this one, okay guys? Give me a break. And then I'll probably move on to the master of the railway. Drop your favorite Spencer moment in the comment section, and I'll see you all next time. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace. Thank you.